And as they make their way, they make their way out of base, Cloud Templar on that Skarner is going to be the hard initiator for the team. Zero to zero in the first 25 seconds for Econtent. Yeah, <laughs> it, I mean, they're, they're already going for something crazy. You can see Team Solomid already grouping up at the top of the map. They want to go for something, and they're right across the way from Shy, who's sitting there. And we talked about this in the break last game, where they will go for blind grabs or blind stuns in the brush to look for opponents. Oh, oh Madlife got a, a ward down, and it didn't get cleared out. Solomid weren't ready for it. So, oh, that would have been so good for them if they could have cleared that ward. But that was a great read there. Madlife knowing Solomid might go for something crazy, and he got the ward across the wall. Not pulling a scar, actually landed it in the brush. <laughs> you guys watch that video, you know what I'm talking about. Rapid Star now seeing them in middle as they all head towards the bottom of the map, just kind of congregating together, keeping that crowd control as it should be. We see Rocket Grab being taken by Expecial, so he's looking to grab somebody over the wall. Wound down bottom as they may take out the golems here. We may still see Solomid go for something a little bit aggressive. They're still together. They just put some saplings down as well, and they are going to regroup here and go toward the bottom of the map. They're going to look for Rapid Star. Those late wastes almost finding him out. They're still putting some down, trying to find the opposition. Chaos listening in, trying to see if Buckshot hit anything. You do get some tactile feedback, as well as your passive turning on. If you do hit something as Graze with that Buckshot, Solomid have not found anything yet on this map. But they have forced Zebu Frost to actually push in for their own mini golems, which is a bit rare of a start here. It's like Rapid Star not getting anything, but uh, Reginald actually did steal away the big Wraith. So even with in all Los that, Angeles, and the crazy started. Nick Special did pull in that Golem as well. Very nice as they start this off, going for the Golem. Team Solo mid, a very nice pressure here. And that's actually what I was expecting from the other Blitzcrank game. That to be pulled. Team Solo mid with quite an advantage as they start denying bust. We saw Zulu Frost do this as well last time, but they weren't able to this time. Still a little bit of aggression towards that top lane as they have done the swap. And Cloud Templar, realizing that a golem buff was likely, has already moved towards the golem. But TSM actually pinged that golem. They, I think they're reading that situation. They had ward of the Wraith camp. They know he's on the way. Look at Ogwood right behind Cloud Templar here. The sapling goes down. They know they're here. Looks like they will pressure onto this. You see the odd one just on the other side. No, and getting the pings down. They're saying get out of there on Azubu Frost side. There's just too much power and crowd control coming in. Ezreal Cloud Templar. He's still got Smite, though. He can steal it away with the ward. He is trying to stay just off of that distance, but they're bringing a lot of team there. They have the ward placed perfectly. They can see on both sides of that blue wall, and they're going to continue to go for it. Rapid Star just on the other side. We can see a big special there. They're all coming down for this. What a fight for Blue Buff at three minutes into the game. They are really wanting to deny this. Knowing that theirs is down, they want this back with Vengeance. They are going to push TSM out of there. The ward is just giving them too much control of this position. They get a tick onto Mad Life. The Dowser goes down and they're not able to uh, take back out of the beautiful pull in. Mad Life for sure will go down for first blood. He flashes away and the general picking up blue and a kill. Wound forced out of the fight as well. A lot of flashes being blown here and Azubu Frost on their heels quickly. Wow, they faded and took so much time. The crowd, the home crowd for TSM really getting behind them. Wanted to make this a thing. And look at the setup for Solomid. Chaos soloing top as Graves. They've got Jay soloing bottom there from Dyrus and everyone else playing Rome or pushing somewhere else. So an interesting setup here. Pretty similar actually to what we saw from, uh, from Dignitas as well. This time though, it's coming out a little bit better overall for TSM here. They're making some nice lane swaps that are working out just so far. Everyone else roaming around. Some of that of course was the, uh, the blue steel, but overall, that fight was about CSM buying enough time that they could finally get their smite back up. Shy, though, putting on some great pressure on the Chaos. Shy now having to back off a little bit, though. He is right near his turret, and we do have a special coming back up. There is a ward in that, but it's going to be Team Solo mids in that early aggression. They put down some good wards just by the minion. Oh, over the shoulder of Shy. And it looks like the minion wave will prevent them from diving anything here, trying to get that power fist to do anything. However, it's special's level one, so he's not going to power fist anyways. Yeah, he, once he gets that experience, though, it's going to be a scary situation. And you've got to be worried a little bit about these 2 on ones on both sides. Anything with a Blitzcrank is always a super, super difficult lane to deal with. Blitzcrank, that rocket grab, and a power fist with hits level 2 is just really, really brutal. And it's really good at setting up kills on a solo lane. And Aurelia, being so melee based, is going to get set up for that kind of situation. You can see the counter trades, though, here from Azubu Frost. They're going to have similar situations here because they've got Tarek. That Dazzle is a lot of damage uh, you know, available there with the crowd control. You're going to have really good setups there for Ezreal. 
Uh oh, and here comes Naokai waiting around on the wing. If they can get a rocket grab, this will turn into a kill on Shy. There's a lot of damage to come from these three champions and crowd control as well. So Shy will not be able to trade back too much to help the turret. So to get turret help rather. So they oh. are going to push down onto this, throwing the sapling out to give them some ward vision. And it looks like they're just going to be able to clear this one out. Really dominating Shy's lane. They do not want him to be farmed up this time. This was actually perfect play from Solo Mid. There's a couple of options when you go in a 1v2 lane. There's, there's about three. Number one, you set up a tower dive. You go in behind, push from the turret, and go for the kill. Number two, you zone. You don't push, and you just try to get the champion killed. Or number three is you actually go for the turret kill right away. And at 5.48 into the game, that turret is going to go down. Solo Mid, first blood and first turret blood, a great start here. They are playing a lot stronger. It's like they want to get to the team fight game early in this matchup. We see them taking down that turret six minutes into this game. A good gold lead of about 2,700 gold. Actually, it's going to be 1,700 gold at this point. Reginald looking for some mana. We'll get a little bit there from the level, so he's going to try to clear this minion, get a good gold off that siege. And we can see mid lane now coming in with Chaos and X Special. They're going to start roaming around here. And Reginald's going to be more than happy to start getting a lot of assists. Level 6, that Requiem is going to start doing some damage. Well, these lanes are going to get better and better overall. They're already giving Aurelia a really hard time there, Shy. Now, what they need to do, though, is they have to keep Aurelia from farming back up and scaling back into this game. We saw this happen a few times where they opened up a really early opening uh, and, and you know put a lot of pressure on a lane and then kind of left it alone and let it farm back up. They, they don't need to just get turrets. They need to make sure that Aurelia has a tough time as well. They want to revisit top lane every once in a while and pick off Aurelia. She has no turret to run to easily. If they get behind her, she's got nowhere to go. They should set up a couple of more kills on Aurelia. Just face them out every few oh, minutes oh. and go for it. No, grabbing the minion. They go for him still. They got him caught up very well. They great positioning by Chaos. He can't even pass through the bush. Team Solo Mid really moving around the map, and they showed this with their very first level one fight with the Golem Steel, and they got back to their own Golem as a group every single time, making these plays happen. Look at that, Solo Mid going for the Dragon now as well. They are playing as a cohesive unit. This feels a lot like that performance from Moscow 5 at Kiev, where no team was really ready for the types of plays made by this new coming team. Well, Solo Mid looks like they've done their homework and found something special here. They've gotten the Dragon, two kills, and a turret. This is a 3,000 gold lead at seven and a half minutes. And a little bit of aggression here from Shy onto Dyrus. Shy wanting that back as soon as possible. Wanting to get Dyrus down low and win that lane like he did last time. Team Solo Mid is really on the momentum after that loss. A six minute turret, a seven minute dragon, and they are poised to take the next one with that timer coming up at 13 minutes. We'll see if they're ready for it. The position they put themselves in with now having the AD carry down bottom with the support once again helps for that dragon control. So swapping that lane out fast is really what they needed. And it's going to be good overall. This is kind of how Sullivan wants to play it, is by keeping the pressure on, on, on. And by having such a good top lane, Chaos and Special are actually above Wung and Mad Life, so they can simply just go around to this bottom lane and bully it, almost like it were that 2v1 again. And because that, that shove top works so well early on, even Dyer's going to have an easy time at this top lane. He's got an assist there. He's only down three minions, but he's got a turret and dragon to back up his gold. You can see he's going to be above Aurelia in farm. 2300 to 1900, you know, even without ever fighting one on one, Dyrus is above Shy. This bottom lane is better for Team Suleiman as well. And of course, Reginald, again, those global objectives on his side. Every one of these lanes for Suleiman, because of the pressure of one group of players, is actually better on all sides. Well, we see Blue Buff being donated over to Reginald as he nicely gives the odd one the smaller golem. Going into this bottom lane here, Woong and Mad Life doing what they can to keep the aggression up. It does look like it's 54 to 69 going in favor of Chaos right now, being very strong in the lane, being able to push out Shy up top, and now having another farm lane to go through. This is so good for the AD carry, and Reginald known for farming as well. Just continuously stealing rates back and forth. The carries are going to get fed very well for TSM if they continue to keep this up. And the difficulty for Azibu Frost as well is that they don't have the, exactly the right kind of roster to set up a lot of kills just yet. Vladimir, not the best lane roamer because he doesn't show up to a, to a side lane with any crowd control. He's got to make sure that either Shy or Mad Life really sets something down to support that. Now, if he can show up with damage, and if he, if he comes on the back of Cloud Templar with Impale as soon as he's level 6, then okay, that's a decent gank overall. Vladimir is great at shoving lanes. He can roam and then show back up to a lane later on. So they, they you know, potentially have the tools to make these fights go well. But it's really, really, really going to rely on Cloud Templar. He's now hit level 6. Let's see what he can do. Here we go. Rapid Star getting hit up to the skies. Goes down. 
makes himself untouchable with that pool, the impale, but he was in pool while the impale happened. They couldn't synergize the damage, and they turned around the kill for TSM, just not cor correlated correctly by Azubu. And that was really, really unfortunate. You know, the jump went on, and it was really, you know, they didn't have uh, time to spend there. They jumped on a rapid tower. He had to burn his cooldowns early. He had to pool before dying. And, you know, Clyde Templar tried to show up. He flashed and failed to pull something together, but he simply couldn't quite make that one happen. You know, and that was really, it was still a mid jumping out of that fight two seconds before it would have been disastrous. If they had waited around and been more patient, it would have been completely in Azubu Frost's favor there. This grab right there. Statistically saying, now 11 minutes into the game, Azubu Frost off to their worst start, and TSM showing us the earliest dragon of the tournament. Three minutes for that dragon to come back up at 3-0 to zero in favor of TSM. That gold lead at 3,100 gold right now. TSM holds a small lead, but this is where they stop making mistakes. They know they have the small lead, and they know how to snowball that. They know how to carry it and continue to push down towers. After each fight, you will see TSM continuously going for turrets freak. They leave nothing to chance, and they know when they have openings. Yeah, they're actually not even shoving this bottom lane for a turret right now. They're actually happy to let that lane kind of sit around. Special taking a bit of poke as a result, though. He is getting hit by Woong's Ezreal quite a bit. You know, Woong, very, very comfortable on that Ezreal. is having a pretty good game overall. But you can see that bottom lane still really great for solo mid. 96 to 77 in minions. Chaos is having kind of the time of his life in that lane. You're seeing Dyrus actually still get out minion farm by Shy, And he came into that lane with an advantage. Uh, and, and, you know, the minion kills are going the other way. However, remember that he's been spending time roaming. He came down to that bottom lane and forced that kill on a Rapid Star. I'll give up 10 minions too if it means a champion kill. So, uh, you know, Dyrus, even though you're seeing him kind of statistically look a little bit worse in lane, remember that he's doing more things than just farming. That is a big deal for his team. So the Dyrus is now up top. We'll see if he makes any moves within the next minute and a half. That Dragon Objective will be up. The buff, a control for both teams. Way more lackluster than the first game. We saw Cloud Templar paying much more attention to that. But right now, the grab onto Mad Life. Like you said, not somebody you really want to grab, but they're going to be able to burst down Tarek. The Requiem for sure to take him down. Wound just trying to get what damage he can in. 4 to 0, Team Solo mid. The odd one coming up from the wing. The flash, Arcane Ship Flash. It's just under the turret. And he really plays that one, but he has to blow that summoner flash. Yeah, that was a smart play overall, though. You know, good uh, good opening there by the Oblin. Burned his own flash to get into range for that. Did burn Wound's flash. And in the end, I think that's kind of worth doing, though. You know, burning an AD carries flash, you know, it doesn't... I mean, it does matter here for the odd one because he does uh, have that Oracle Elixir. He's a very high-profile kill there. They want to make him broke. Maokai does need items to be a tank. He's not like Alistair, where you can just press your ultimate and rely on not taking damage anymore. He does need items to scale throughout this game. But at the same time, making Woong more available to kills is always important as well, especially when you've got a Blitzcrank on that roster who can really set those openings up. So they do have Skarner down in that bottom lane. His red buff coming up, so Cloud Templar is going to head up, possibly give this one down bottom. New room, but I think he's going to take it for himself. They really haven't been too much success on the ganks. At 4-0, to zero, we saw a much faster game from Azubu Frost last time. They're very unsure of their fight initiations here. Frick, as you said before, the initiations really aren't ready for them yet. Their team hasn't scaled into that fighting stage. We did see the Moscow 5 kind of played this somewhat with the EVE game as they had to wait till late until their champions scaled over higher. So right now, it's a very lackadaisical game for Azubu Frost. They've really not made any major moves. They're kind of they're kind of just relying on Skarner to make some early plays, and it just feels like their confidence got broken here. This feels a lot like what happened with Saigon Jokers against uh, CLG EU in the last game of Group B, where all day they've been aggressive and making plays and making openings. And here we go. Oh, the pull in once again. Madlight finding himself getting grabbed. The heals go out. They bait it in. He gets himself out alive, throwing down the ultimate to help his team with the aura. Ezreal coming up with a kill. His wound just left on the outside to punish down. Chaos looks to be dropping low and taken out by Cloud Templar. Finally, a successful gank putting Azubu on the board. That is just enough members showing up just in time. Look at that fight. Cloud Templar not taking no for an answer, really picking out the pressure there. They really need this turret. They start to gain map control with this. And Freak, the dragon has come up. They should go to check it because it would be the perfect time to take that. Reginald putting pressure on Rapid Star in the middle. The Hemo Plate goes down. Shy trying to put as much damage on to help that percentage tick. And it just wasn't really any damage. Yeah, that was, a, that was a little weird. I didn't really love Rapid Star's moves there, but even still, it did push Reginald away. That might have just been there to try to keep right. Solo mid from actually trying to stop this Dragon attempt. They are running down, but Cloud Templar and Woong don't show signs of wanting to stop this. I think they're going to go for this pressure anyway. You 
do see uh, that Reginald had to recall back, so there is no one to stop this Dragon Attempt. A very nice comeback a little push there. That's really, really good for Zudu Frost. They pretty much got that gold lead back now, only down 700 gold. Yeah, that is going to help. Now the Dragons at 1-1 one to one in the matchup. We're going to see that one and again around 21 minutes coming in. But it just looked like TSM was not worried about that. We've heard TSM say in the past, a dragon fight, if you're not ready for it, is not worth the loss of your teammates because of what they just lose over the time of being in the death chamber. You're not in lane to get experience. The buffs aren't coming out. And we see TSM, as they take dragon, as Ubu Frost is forced to go back a bit, they use that advantage for the bit turret. This is the second time I've actually seen a Zubu Frost uh, kind of trade away one of their own turrets for an objective like Dragon. They were right. you know, very, very weak afterwards and had to give up that advantage. And I don't know, I think that's mostly Sulamid making really, really good moves, knowing they can trade objectives away like that and are happy to take those leads. But it's still, it just it gives you that sort of pang of, of uncertainty there when, you know, a Zubu Frost had map control and in the end traded objectives equally for it. So, Freak, as, you know, Zubu Frost does scale later into the game, we see the Rod of Ages and the Bloodthirst are being finished for Team Solo Mid. Even if they do start to scale, the fact that they're behind and not creating these core items, what's going to be the next step to mitigate TSM Snowball? So to mitigate TSM Snowball, they need to put some more pressure back on Reginald's Karthus. He had burned his flash, his exhaust is down, he's level 12 with a lot of power on that Requiem, but they need to, to you know, put, get in as many battles as they can before Rabidon's death cap. That is a huge power spike there for Karthus. When you go back to SK Gaming's uh, loss uh, in, in the group stage, uh, not to CLG, but uh, one of the other ones, uh, it was, it was Ocelot was, I think, 40 gold away from finishing Death Cap when the game-winning push came in. And Ocelot was killed and had to fat cast Requiem without that surge of ability power. And, and after the Requiem landed, there were like two members of the enemy team below 100 health, where if he had just gotten three more minion kills and gotten back to base, that would have been a very game-turning fight, picking up a double kill there and keeping their base alive. So they want to put on as much pressure as possible before Reginald farms up more gold. He's currently sitting at 1,200. He's got another 2,200 gold to go before he can finish that item. Over the next 2,000 gold, Frost needs to put on a lot of pressure there, get some more turrets out, hope for another dragon, maybe even a Baron Bait, though it's unlikely here, and get that pressure going. You can hear all the pings going out as all these teams communicating in the min most minimal way possible so they can continue to keep the chemistry talk going. Huge onto Dyrus. He did not expect to find a 2v1 situation top and will find himself going down. This is now the Cloud Templar show. He's got Oracle's Elixir and is going to have one of the best ganks in the game being that Skarner. And there they found Rapid Star in the mid, though. This is going to be bad. That Wall of Pain, however, already went down. So this is just going to be a chase. Let's speed. Maokai on the backside. The Arcane Smash to slow him down. Twisted Advance coming up soon. And it looks like they'll be able to take him down. But here comes Wooing and Mad Life. They are aggressive in their lane. And they will fight this one out to the end. You can see the flash in from Mad Life. Not caring. Going straight out to man mode. Wooing finds a kill onto the odd one. Rapid Star, or rather Reginald, is the chase right now from Shy. The flash over. And he's just going to walk through to file happily. The exhaust goes down. That single target damage is going to be a lot of burst, and Reginald just really trying to do what he can before going down, but biding time for team his team to do other things. Requiem onto Shy, and he does go down the one for one. Dude, Reginald, that was an incredibly sick move there. Caught out of position, but knew how much time he could build for an exhaust. He could land more shots. Knew Shy did not have cooldowns yet you know, just kited and kited and kited and landed just enough damage that last lay waste all he needed to ensure that kill. I've got to hand it, that was a really, really good move from Reginald there, bringing that kill a little bit more equal. But the thing to remember though, is Cloud Templar still has not fallen since buying that Oracle. He's still gonna snowball this game through with a lot of map control. The top lane is quite pushed. The items right now, 14 solo mid, not very barrenable, but we've seen earlier barons in these matchups. I believe a 15, 16 minute baron was our earliest, and that was shy on Jax with Cloud Templar going in hard. I believe actually was the support there as well. Cloud Templar came in late, so that two for them was uncontested. As Ubu Frost knows when to take scary chances, here's one of them right now, but this one is completely in their favor. An impale on the Chaos and the wards, not enough to keep him alive. They need to start worrying about map control. That Cloud Templar, man, he's making the moves that we expected to see from a Zebu Frost. Most of their team really not very ganky overall. Shy had a bad matchup. Woong and Madlife were already zoning and pushing Dyrus to his turret. There were no openings there for Cloud Templar to make any ganks, because you can't gank for a Vladimir. There's just not any damage there, especially against a Karthus who's going to play in the back lines and farm safely. So, you know, that lineup, it did not look 
like anything Cloud Templar could have ganked for. But he finally hit level 6, and he finally had teammates with a lot of damage. And you've seen him now, time and again, that one-on-one -on -one shy, uh, shy versus Dyrus. Nope, two-on-one. We got a Skarner here. That bottom lane, Chaos trying to get some farm. Nope, Skarner's here. Another kill picked up. He is showing up over and over. Cloud Templar now 3-1-2 yeah. and two is the number one player of this game. The unpaused, though, we're back into this game. Let's get it underway. We're still in game two of Azubu Frost versus Team Solo Mid. The team's only 300 gold apart. Solo Mid needs to win this game to stay alive. Azubu Frost wants to win this to make it to the semifinals. Guys in the audience, are you excited for this game? Crowd here completely full. Downtown Los Angeles is beaming with summoners. LA Live, the place to be right now for the League of Legends Season 2 Championship Playoffs. Azubu Frost versus Team Solo Mid as they now go into this nail biting match to keep North America in the League of Legends Championship. 6 to 6 at 20 minutes into the game. The gold is near even at about 500, actually 300 gold difference. And this is going to be just neck and neck the whole way through. It's going to be the battle of who can get crazier initiates. Because both these teams have a lot of scaling. Jace and Aurelia will scale similarly. Graves and Ezra will scale similarly. Vladimir and Karthus will scale similarly. Uh, they've got tanks in the front line who are going to really set up a lot of, of you know, difficult situations for both teams. But what you're going to see break these teams apart are two major factors. It's Rocket Grab and it's uh, Flash, Aurelia's Reverie, Impale. Both these teams have some kind of crazy initiation move to start team fights out in a really awkward situation. Neither of these teams have a full-on dedicated tank. There's no Shen, Alistair, or Malphite with like a Frozen Heart Randuits to absorb damage for seven days. It's bruisers converting themselves into tanks and trying to survive that initial impact. And so what's going to happen here is almost no matter who is pulled, someone's going to die in about four seconds. And it depends, is it going to be the Impale on an important target? Is it going to be the Rocket Grab on an important target? Someone could die in seconds flat, and making that a 5 on 4 is all either team needs. You're seeing a 1% gold difference between these two teams. It means almost nothing. It's all going to be down to how the team fights happen, who orchestrates the battles. Even the turrets are split evenly. These teams are just 100% neck and neck. And it looks like Team Solo Mid trying to dictate what is going to happen from here on out. The oracles on both of the junglers to clear and sweep around the jungle, trying to give them that little advantage. It really is going to be the pull to happen, the correct impale to just go off. These fights are going to be an instant initiation as they come up. It looks like Team Solo Mid beginning to push mid. They don't have too much of a minion wave with them just yet. Just a few caster minions there with a melee in the front. That's going to be wiped out as Rapid Star coming up. Quite big now on that Vladimir. Actually, I believe he goes for the Abyssal Scepter and the Revolver, so he's helping his team out a little bit. Not that there's much magic to be helped out there in Shredding, but that Hemo Plague is going to be doing a good amount of damage as his team will synergize off the damage with that. So still a good build for him, but he's got to remember that AP comes from health as well. So he could go for that tanky build, but Freak, he put a lot of focus on that death cap for him, and he's just putting himself farther and farther away from it. He's getting, them, he's getting himself there pretty quickly, though. He's got uh, not a lot of gold still to go for Reginald here. He's got, let's see, you know, he's got the, uh, the new large rod already, and he's at about 1,200 gold, and he needs 2,000 for the combine at this point. So with 800 gold, Reginald is going to surge up in power. Rapid Star, I don't love the Abyssal Scepter build here because he doesn't have another ability power champion to synergize with, right. but he's still going to be putting out a lot of damage in a team fight. But what this means, though, is that Rapid Star is relying more on, uh, on his consistent damage with Ties of Blood and not so much burst of gold. Well, the two shot riders, there's Hemo Plague. The team really not there to capitalize on it. TSM backing off, but it looks like they are getting wiped out in this fight right here. Especially on the odd one, very low. They're able to get three. Azubu Frost coming up huge on Team Solo Mid right now. Wound the focus. He flashes over Kayak Buckshot. That's actually the arcane shift coming in. And the odd one now forced to run. Azubu Frost, I was about to say it as they took top to it. Once they start taking that map control, they start to pummel down lanes. Now winning that fight, they're going to be able to do exactly Exactly that. That team, however, close in HP. It was just all the members from PSM dropping before they could take the sliver of health away from Azubu Frost. Now, coming in with the Baron, Azubu getting most of every Baron they've ever had an attempt on in a match, whether it's a steal or not. And it looks like they're going to be able to grab this one for themselves. Quite uncontested. The odd one, sitting off the wing, will do what he can, and he will not be able to get it. The smite comes out from Cloud Templar. 
Nice job, Azubu Frost. That team fight was as perfect as it could have been. They got the Impale off on Dyrus. He went down early on. Dyrus unable to even flash or ignite, so you know he was pinned the entire way through. Kayox really on the receiving end of those attack speed slows. I thought he had the damage it would take to kill off Woong, but Woong just would not die in that situation, picking that one up. Let's check out a replay with the Korean audio to see what Frost was saying about that fight. Alright, there you have it guys, the coordination there, picking off targets one at a time in that duel at the end. Woon coming out ahead on Ezreal. That would have been a very important battle right there if Kayox had picked up that kill himself. He had enough lifesteal to probably withstand Cloud Templar even because there's not a lot of damage there on that Skarner. He might have been able to out lifesteal it. But now up 10 to 7 in kills, 3,000 gold ahead with that Baron buff. There's not a lot of options here for solo mid. A smooth cross, just like that first game, is what is going to want to put on a lot of pressure and go for some turret kills here. So Cloud Templar now 4, 1, and 5 freak. Looking at his build, he is quite tanky. He said he doesn't have a lot of damage, but he can rely on that for his team. What's going to be next in his build? For Cloud Templar here, he might see a Frozen Heart up next. He's going to want to be a big tank. There's a lot of physical damage output overall here between Dyrus and Kayaks. It's a lot there. I don't think he's really going to itemize all that hard for, for Reginald, so I'm expecting a big armor item. Maybe it's Frozen Heart, maybe it's Guardian Angel, but he's going to want to be a big tank initiator because we're at the point now where there is a lot of damage overall from Solomid, and he's still going to be that key initiator in a dedicated team fight, especially if Solomid uh, are, are just you know, safe in the background and, and just sort of relying um, on their on, on defensive play, they're going to be able to be defending themselves behind turrets and Cloud Temple will have to dive in and actually initiate uh, to make those fights happen. Woon gets a steal on the blue buff, but he's now getting chased down a little bit by Solomid because he's going to make it out though, and it's going to be back to a split push here. Zibu Frost actually putting out a lot of pressure on the side lanes before going for a push. I'm surprised they're not trying to close this out a little bit better with just a consolidated shove in mid. Yeah, they do have that Aurelia up top. Shy can definitely fend for himself, and he will meet Excuse me, Reginald up in that top lane. We can see Kayox now heading up there with the odd one. But the split push is definitely going to give them an advantage here. They have Mad Life as well, throwing off the ultimate to give that AD out so they can just crush down this turret. And they move off of that one quite quickly. You see Ezreal farming down bottom lane as they pretty much are just try pushing at this point. And that's interesting because, you know, I feel like TSM are happy to fight smaller engagements because no matter where Reginald is, he can lend that Requiem. He's actually popped a blue elixir as well, giving him bonus cooldown reduction and ability power, which really does boost him up in these fights. We'll see if that matters too much there. Reginald is weird. He bought a second needlessly large rod. I would have really, really thought Death Cap was in there for him. The Dazzle coming out to stop some of the reinitiation. Great job by Mad Life just staying there for that last second to stop anything that could happen. Shy now with his Guardian Angel coming out before that 30 minute mark. He also has the Triforce to do some explosive damage as he is in fight. Rapid Star still keeping the pressure on, and that Baron is really just giving them. That, that play on the mentality of Team Solar Mid right now. They'd love to initiate, but they know the fight will not be in their favor right off the bat. This one, however, they do like, aren't able to get the initiation on. Team Solo Mid is still itching to get an initiation here. And Zubu Frost, they really are just playing that split push card and playing so well. But Cloud Templar getting caught out here at the bottom. It looks like it's going to hurt pretty bad. There's the initiation with Weklum to keep the fight going. During the tide of this one, they are able to get down. Cloud Templar, that shutdown will throw some gold their way. That's really important too, because he had oracles as well, so Cloud Templar must realize that while he can buy some items and get himself more powerful, he wants to probably re-buy that oracles. I wouldn't really trust Mad Life on Tarek with an oracles. Tarek is just a bit of a frail champion and is, is pretty easy to kill off in a team fight, so they don't want to really deal with that. A good pull once again onto Mad Life. He just has pull written all over him, but they find Chaos out on the left side. TSM will engage on this. The Baron right now to Azubu Frost, and they're going to start losing a lot of solo mid members. Azubu Frost, however, somewhat pushed out of it. The two to two fight, the sliver of health on Azubu Frost's side. TSM with a sliver of health as well. They come out on top. Aurelia is still in this one. We do see Cloud Templar is up, and it looks like the three to three overall. I just want to point out that a special saved Odd One's life. He rocket grabbed Vladimir, waited long enough for him to actually move over with Twisted Advance, which put him back in his own base and safe from Shy. That was an epic move right there. Managed to basically pull his teammate along with it and pick up a kill as a result. So still a close fight here. 
Oh, they're going hard on to Shy here. The bounce up from crowd control. Arcane Smash as well. So they're more than happy to get the turret. Shy with the Guardian Angel still being quite aggressive. Getting that Phage proc on. He will slow. And they may have a better chance to get out of this one. But Cloud Templar is so tanky right now. Coming in. But not actually know what even got himself. That Giant's Belt coming out. And it looks like he may actually be going for that tank, as we said before, Freak. Yeah. No damage for him. He's just going to absolutely get yeah. to the front line. Yeah, I, I kind of expected cooldown reduction from that Frozen Heart just to put out more damage with those uh, with the Crystal Slashes, but it might just be you know a lot more durability. You, you might see Mallet in the field a little bit weird. Maybe it's Sunfire. Maybe it's even just Warbog's armor. It just wants to tank everything out. There are really a lot of available builds here um, for Skarner. So, you know, whatever he kind of goes for, as long as he gets more durable, that's really the most important thing for him here. Now, let's take a look at the overall roster here. Shy is having an amazing game here at 5 and 1. He was always the question mark for this team, being the newest member of that roster, replacing Wing in the top lane actually as Wing went down to AD carry when Loco Doco left. Shy was always the question mark here. Is he good enough? Can he step in and fill Wing's shoes? Well, right now he is 5 and 1. Trinity Force, an untriggered Guardian Angel, and a Wit's End putting out a lot of damage. Yes, I think he's doing quite well this game so far and has been doing amazingly for his team overall in this tournament. Shy, I don't think really much more of a question mark, really more of an exclamation point now for this Azubu Frost lineup. Yes, a punctuation joke, thank you. Now Cloud Templar though, he's still keeping the pressure on throughout the map. The one thing he hasn't done though is rebought Oracle's Elixir. So the, uh, and they did actually put it on Madly. They said, you know what, Tarek, we think you will live in this fight. Go ahead and pick that one up. We'll hope to keep you alive. And this does play to one strength, though, is that TSM does not want to focus Tarek first in a fight. Now, if they pull him, he's almost certain to die right away. But if they don't, you can expect for Madlife to be uh, the most ignored one on that lineup because he will put out the least damage of everyone else there. That they don't want to pull him out early because he's not a big damage threat. So that may pay out in the end. It did allow Cloud Templar to buy a few more items. Coming into this point in the game, 31 minutes in here. This is what you were talking about before. Zubu Frost has now reached those points of scaling that they need. Vladimir are actually not choosing to go ever for the Rabadons, but into the Zonias. Where is the team fight going here? Is TSM going to want to find this in the jungle or an out in the open fight? Uh, I think they're going to want more, uh, you know, sort of a little bit more out in the open, but still with some geometry there. They want to be able to land a rocket grab and land it uh, without a Zubu Frost to be able to follow up easily. Because uh, rocket grab only has so much range, and with Shirelia's there on Skarner, the rest of the team can follow up pretty easily, and Skarner will pull someone back. But if they get a rocket grab like over a wall or into a turret, that's really the kind of fight that Solomid wants because they can actually force some pressure here. If they grab Shy though, it's not going to matter too much. They want to grab pretty much anyone else in that roster to make it happen. There's the Shirelia steroid going off. It looks like they may see an impale here. No, they pull Shy and then rather do not pull Shy and they miss that grab. Rapid start going in. Pools under everybody. The damage going out. Chaos will fall. They're finding it special go down as well. So much health still. Shy, the Guardian Angel coming back up for him. They drop. Three members of TSM, Reginald now in death of five form, and they may have their way with the base here. They don't have enough minions to push on. There's only two there, and uh, Cloud Templar is quite hurt. He is the one to take that turret. Madlife may go down here, and he does, but they drop down Tyrus. The ace is there. Freak the Nexus turrets are going down. Cloud Templar is so tanky. They're trying to thwart out Team Solo mid, trying to stop that path to the championships, and Azubu Frost will knock out Team Solo mid. And just look at the emotions on their faces. The next explode, the crowd cheer. The Zubu Frost has moved themselves to top four in the world. With only one quarter final left to play, which will be tomorrow at noon. And look at that, we found three teams knocked out here. Three moving on to quarterfinals. Team Solomid, a great run though. First place in North America, fifth through eighth in the world is still a great placing overall. Joining with them, Nanjin Sword, top eight team and Invictus Gaming in the top eight team. Still a lot of great moments here today, but we have of course more great moments here tomorrow. I gotta just ask from your perspective, what was it for Azubu Frost? Was it the compositions or just the mentality in game or something else? It was one or two star players making really great moves, which I know counteracts what I said at the beginning, which was that everyone's really right. a great player. They're all gonna do amazing things, but Skarner, Got to hand it to Skarner, making all the plays mid-game. Solo mid looked so good early on, and I said, you know, Frost looked like uh, what we saw uh, from, from Saigon Jokers against CLG EU, where they, where they weren't making any big moves. They were letting the other team walk over them, right. letting the other team make all the big moves and play aggressively, and you saw Solo mid kill, 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 turret, kill, kill, and just making all the great moves early on. And finally, Cloud Templar said, okay, guys, level six, 
Let's get some fights going. Yep. And he found one every single time. With one exception where he, he went for the Impale on Reginald and TSM still picked up the kill in mid on Rapid Star. Every other Impale used resulted in a kill. And I've got to hand it to Cloud Templar for being uh, so reserved there. He only ever, in a team fight, only ever pulled Dyrus. He didn't care about killing Reginald because of Death Defied. Didn't want to kill the Odd One or Special because they're tanks and it's okay if they go down first. Didn't want to go for KX because KX had Guardian Angel or he could Quick Draw or he could get out of that fight. Dyrus was not in that situation. He got Trinity Force and Brutalized before starting for Guardian Angel. He was not tanky for a very, very long time. Even though he had good farm and a couple of kills, Dyrus could not withstand that, that Impale into team fight. And that's really what Azubu Frost did, is when he finally got the Impale going on, they all collapsed. They have so much damage output. As long as Rapids are landed his ultimate, Wound can just force someone down. Shy with so much damage output with E10 style, cuts through those resistances and was just dealing so much damage. The team collapsed. Dyrus would almost always go down very, very quickly in those fights, and everyone else was able to be cleaned up. It's an area of effect team. Cloud Templar's Crystal Slash, a lot of damage everywhere. Shy's ultimate, those blades going everywhere, picking out kills, and of course Vladimir just does it indiscriminately at all times. The yeah. whole of TSM would just take damage, but they would focus that one target, take down that high-profile champion, and then continue on with a numbers advantage over and over. Special made some good moves early on with rocket grabs, but he was not able to pick off those early teamfight kills. All right, guys.